Okay, well, good morning, class. And boy, do you guys look happy and excited to be here. And who could blame you? <laughs> you really want me to answer that? <laughs> okay, what y'all couldn't see on the video is Miss uh, Charlie shooting me a dirty look. <laughs> Just in a different language. Uh, all right. Um, today we are going to start um, uh, uh, learning the intricacies of using words. Um, there are some things I don't like about Microsoft, but one thing that I do like is uh, uh, that makes up for a lot of problems as far as I'm concerned is how easy and intuitive it is to uh, uh, to use uh, uh, Microsoft. All right, so let's see. Um, all right. I, uh, well, that's not actually what I wanted to do. Um, it's, uh, so first of all, let's, let's talk about how to open it. I know a lot of you are already going to have some of this information, uh, so bear with me. So you hit the Start key, the little Windows thing, down in the lower left-hand corner, and I go down my list of programs here. And of course, we have a lot of programs on this computer because it is... Um, uh, used by uh, a lot of different instructors for different uh, programs and stuff. But I come down here to the W's. Oh, finally I'm in the W's. I click on the Word 2016. You may have a slightly different version of Word. You may have Word 365 like I do on my uh, personal computers. Um, uh, but this is the one that uh, uh, that I uh, have on this computer. Um, in a way, I prefer uh, uh, the uh, the version where you've bought it and it's on the computer forever, uh, because I have been in the situation where I go to open a document with. Uh, Office 365 and my subscription has uh, expired and then I've got to go through a whole deal of renewing the uh, subscription even when I just want to do some little thing. All right, but enough bitching. Uh, all right, so I actually see the uh, the file I want to open here, uh, but uh, we're not going to do that. Instead, let's go to blank document. All right, so, so I've got a blank document now. Uh, it's got no frills, no, uh, uh, nothing uh, exciting about it. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to save the document. So I do save as uh, computer skills. And this is going to be Harry S. Whiting short resume. And what did I tell you we always put on? The date, exactly. Okay, but 
I'm actually not going to put today's date. I'm going to put the 13th because I'm superstitious. All right. So, uh, all right. So I've got uh, Harry S. Whiting's short resume, uh, 8-13-2020. Now, why do I put short resume? I do have long ones saved somewhere else. In fact, I was tempted to uh, pull one of those out and show it to you, but those are like 20 pages long, or I think the latest one is 25 pages. Uh, uh, the long resume is uh, what we would call a curriculum uh, vital or, or uh, vita. Uh, which is a very in-depth resume. Uh, even at that, my current uh, uh, curriculum vita doesn't cover the years I was in theater because I've been too lazy to dig all that out and that would probably easily add another 15 pages. All right, so I've got this bank, blank piece of paper. Now you'll notice right up here under the paragraph part of the ribbon, I've got left, justify, center, right, justify, and spread it out evenly uh, across the whole page. Um, never use the spread it out evenly across the whole page unless uh, your boss or the requirements of submitting a document say that you have to do that. It makes it harder to read. And we don't want something that's hard to read. All right, but right now I do want center because I'm going to put my name, Perry S. Whiting to PE. Uh, PE because I have a professional engineer's license in Texas. I keep meaning to apply for one here in New Mexico, but in my summers when I have the most time, the school always ends up tying me up with some projects that. <laughs> <laughs> that end up taking up the whole summer. Uh, this summer, for example, I got to work on Dr. Bowman's uh, task force about how we could open the school safely. All right, then I would put my uh, address, post office box, I'm not actually going to tell you my post office box. I'm afraid uh, uh, that you'll all send me your homework that way, and that's going to be terribly clumsy. All right, then Crown Point, New Mexico. All right, I'm not, hello? Uh, hello, uh, I hear you. Do you have a question? No, uh, I'm doing the video right now. Okay, well. All right, now, one thing that I'm noticing that I'm not doing immediately is I'm not sharing this. So I'll go ahead and. There we go. Hmm? Oh, no, you don't just put it into you on the first one. I'll go ahead and do share screen. All right, now, what I want y'all to do is to be creating your own resume uh, uh, along with me. All right, now, I noticed that uh, my enlargement is already at 160. I'll run that up a bit here. 
Hopefully you'll be able to see it better on the video that way. In fact, come to think of it, I'm praying this comes out on the video. I haven't tested the video with the sneeze-proof wind vents here. Um, all right. Now, you'll notice I have this computer so well trained, it always goes to my favorite font, which is Times New Roman. Okay? But go ahead and uh, uh, change your font uh, to be one that you would like. Make sure that it's one that's readable. Some of these fonts are very, very hard to read uh, that they give you a choice of. Right? The, uh, the uh, ordinary, uh, uh, ordinary default for Word is Calibri, um, which is all right, but I, uh, uh, I like a font with serifs. Uh, serifs are the little parts that stick out on the letters. Uh, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the, uh, the old song, I Use the Serifs. Uh, never mind, that song is so old, none of y'all are going to get that is my guess. All right. Even though the short resume we want to keep to be uh, uh, two pages or less, uh, you want to use a large font size. And by large, I mean at least 12. And sometimes for the header portion, like my address here, I'll use like a 14 uh, to make it stand out a little bit. Uh, okay, so uh, there we go. Uh, all right, so I've got my address. What else am I going to put on there? Contact information. Other contact information. It's a, a pretty surprising that these employers don't want to send something to your post office box mm -hmm. and wait for you to reply. Right? So um, I would put my um, uh, my cell phone number and now it depends on uh, it depends on my situation what email address I'm going to put on there. Right? In this case, I'm going to go ahead and put on my school email address. hwhiting at navajotech.edu. Uh, all right. Well, boy. That is kind of a big uh, uh, header, but also it's partly because I've got the uh, uh, I've got the uh, uh, Word document blown up to 200 times, 200 percent of its uh, size. Not 200 times. That would be like as big as this room. I don't think we got a piece of paper that big. All right. So, um, uh, so what kind of things do we put in our resume then? Okay. I'm going to. You'll notice that the program automatically recognized that was an email address, and it and it w put it in blue and underlined it so that you could actually just uh, hit the control button and click and it would instantly take you to the uh, to your email program uh, to write an email to me. All right, 
Well, I'm going to go to left justify, and usually uh, at this point, I put in skills. Um, and uh, now, some people say you should have objectives. I really don't like that in a resume because it's obvious your objective is to get a job, you know, but, but people have objectives and I want to get a job in the fast moving industry of, oh my God. Uh, one thing I should say is I have read at least hundreds of resumes, maybe thousands because of uh, my work as a manager over the years. All right? When I tell you to save it, uh, to save it as your name and uh, uh, say resume and date, that is very important. I cannot tell you how many times I received a resume whose file name was my resume. Um, luckily, when I did that, it was over the computer, and so I couldn't shoot the people immediately, <laughs> which I wanted to do. Probably I would have been able to restrain myself, but, but it's a good thing that we didn't have to put that to the test. All right, so what kind of skills have you got? Um, uh, right, for example, uh, uh, for me, carpentry and woodworking would be a skill. Um, uh, computer programming, I can do that, but my skills are kind of out of date uh, on that. I don't want to, um, and I don't want to highlight anything where I'm going to be embarrassed later. If you, uh, if you give your employer a resume that says something that is false about you, that is a cause for firing right there, and I don't really think you want to go in that direction, uh, right? So you always want to be truthful. Okay, so what else? Um, I'm a lean facilitator. Um, experienced manager. Um, Boy, I may have to pull up my resume. I've forgotten all the good stuff that I've uh, 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 that I've got uh, uh, in there. Uh, and that's that's the thing is never sit down and think, oh, I can just whip out a resume in five minutes, uh, right? Uh, because uh, the the uh, the truth is, you want to take time, you want to reflect on what are your skills. You may have skills you don't want to highlight. Um, uh, for example, even though I'm a pretty good painter, I'm never going to put painter in my resume because I hate painting. I've had to do a lot of it in my life but that doesn't mean that I like it, um, right? So you want to put down the uh, skills that you have uh, that, are, uh, that are relevant, and you might want to change it slightly as you apply for different jobs or, or you're giving your resume to different uh, people, right? So, uh, so you want to have a um, um, uh, 
Uh, so you want to have the stuff uh, that you um, uh, that you're good at that you want to highlight for a particular job, right? So, for example, if I were applying for an engineering job, I wouldn't put in carpentry and woodworking. Uh, right? I mean, unless it's a job of uh, engineering wooden furniture or something of this nature. Uh, right? So we want to be very careful what we're putting in uh, uh, and we want to look at it and say, is there, uh, uh, is there anything in here that I'd want to eliminate because it's kind of redundant or, uh, you know, not important? And I'm going to say, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate uh, experience in this uh, a part of the, and just say experience manager with multi-million dollar, I didn't put dollar, uh, contracts, right? So when I was with Texas A&M, I managed several multi-million dollar contracts. And I don't want to brag, but one contract we executed so well, there was only $4.36 left in the account uh, at the end of the contract. Um, all right, so I'm going to leave skills now. The, uh, and you want to think about stylistically, how do I want to do this, right? Um, for example, I've got skills here. Maybe I should uh, bold and underline that. Right? You'll notice that right here in the font section, you can um, uh, you can do that. You can also italicize. I'm not big on italics myself. Um, right? In here we also have like a strike through. Sometimes I'll use that if I'm writing something uh, and I uh, um, and I talk about uh, the dictator and then I'll do strike through on that and I'll put er governor Michelle Grisham Uh, or something like that to be humorous. Sometimes you want to use strike through if you're doing corrections and you want the person to see what you've changed. Right? Although with Word you also have the ability to use track changes. Right? Because look at all these different menus up here for the ribbon. Uh, right? File uh, lets you save the file, export, you can close a document, whatever. Uh, home is where you're going to be uh, a lot of the time. Insert, insert lets you uh, space your document, add pictures, uh, Use, uh, use shapes to build um, a little picture of your own. Uh, uh, for example, I, uh, when we did the ABET report, I used the shapes to make a little uh, a diagram to show how we use the DPE in our assessment process. Uh, smart art, um, they give you some choices of 
some already existing little patterns and things that you can fill in. You can put in charts. Oh, okay. I have to close the smart art. You can put in uh, little charts. I prefer to build my charts in uh, Excel and we'll spend more time on that when we get to Excel um, or a, sp a screenshot um, uh, right here they have add-ins store I don't know I never go buy anything at the store um, uh, you can have add-ins to uh, uh, to uh, Word, you know, to Excel, to uh, PowerPoint. Um, uh, for example, an add-in that I used to use a lot at Ohio University was called Write and Cite, where I could put the references uh, to articles uh, or, or books or whatever into my papers uh, and all I had to do was uh, click on the right and site add-in and then it would let me give me a whole list of things I could do. You can link to an online uh, video. You can put a hyperlink. The uh, program automatically hyperlinked my uh, email address, right? But sometimes you want to put in like an actual address uh, a URL that the uh, that people can uh, uh, go ahead and people can go ahead and uh, go to that uh, while they're reading your document uh, right so you can put comments headers footers uh, so, for example, I might want to put in, uh, put a header in my document, right? Well, I would click on header. It would give me uh, some, uh, some types of headers I can put in. Um, uh, so, I'll, I'll choose this uh, blank that has one left side right and I'll just uh, put oops Harry S. Whiting oh there's a G in Whiting comes back to me now PE resume uh, right then I close that and and you can see that's kind of grayed out shadowed uh, up there, um, right for my CV type resume, I will. I want to put in uh, maybe the page numbers. As I said, it's very long. And in fact, a couple of people that uh, are a couple of places that have interviewed me are like, "What the hell is with this long resume?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I'm not as amusing as I think, apparently. Uh, all right. So anyway, uh, all of these give us different ways that we can uh, uh, that we can do our document differently, uh, and uh, we'll get around to talking about more of them as we go. All right. So I've already done skills. I'm just going to leave it there, uh, even though the uh, on my actual resume is kind of a fat little paragraph. Well, relatively fat. Uh, it could afford to lose some weight. Um, all right. So then, what is the next thing we're going to put on our resume? Employment history. Employment history. Although I usually just call it employment or experience all right so I want that to be 
the same style as when I did skills there. Now you'll notice after skills, I just started typing right after skills. Here though, I want to go to the next line. Um, uh, right, so, uh, so the obvious uh, first thing to put on here is Navajo Technical University. Uh-oh, I've still got my uh, bold and underline on, but that's fine. All I have to do is highlight and go back and click on those again, and that will stop. All right. So usually when we do that, uh, we put where it is. Generally, we don't necessarily give the whole uh, uh, address and then I'm going to put my uh, uh, my ex uh, my years uh, or, or the dates of my employment excuse me bloody hell what am I thinking um, all right so that would be from August 2012 to well, I'm still working here, so what do I put? I put present. And I go back and I fix August, because you'll notice I misspelled August, uh, which is uh, uh, not at all unusual. Uh, I'm a terrible speller. Um, OK, so, but I can do that by hovering the cursor over it right-clicking, and it will give me a set of choices. August is the first one, but angst, ought, august, uh, augusta are all given, right? But all I have to do is go here to uh, till the cursor highlights August and left-click on that, and it fixes that. Now, I actually usually like to put those uh, dates of employment all the way to the right. All right, so I can try the spread it across the page, but you'll notice that really does nothing for me when I click on that. So what I'm going to do instead is I will hit the tab button. All right, that was too many tabs. Um, so then I hit the space bar until up until it's all the way right justified. Okay, does that seem easy enough? Okay, well I've got one nod, I'll take it. All right. So I uh, I go down uh, and I uh, put assistant professor. Uh, now, because when I started here, everybody was just labeled an instructor, I could put assistant professor from Oh gosh, uh, what, when was it we did that? It was like 2015 to present. Uh, uh, and then I could put instructor below. Uh, but uh, that might be um, uh, that might be too much for this one. When I get to my Texas A&M, I'm probably going to put uh, uh, all my promotions um, but for right now uh, I'm not going to. 
And I can put then uh, duties And now I'm going to start bullet pointing. All right, so teach 14 to 16 credit hours per semester. Oh, that's not a uh, one. There we go. Okay, but that by itself uh, uh, doesn't tell the whole story, so I might go uh, industrial engineering and general engineering. Uh, I'm going to put down faculty committees, and this one uh, calls for some thought. On my long resume, I would then do sub bullets and say, um, things like the Academic Excellence Committee, the Gen Ed Committee, uh, and so on down the line. Uh, but on the short resume, I know I'm going to be pressed for space. But look, when I'm creating it, I can just put down everything. I mean, I always advise overwrite because uh, very often, we are less prepared uh, to uh, make something longer than we are to shorten it down to the length we need. Okay, so I'll put down Academic Excellence Committee. I'll put down the General, General Education Committee. I'll put down the Program Review Committee. Right, however much uh, I want to there. All right, so you'll notice though that I got these in the sub bullets and you may be saying, how did he do that? All I did was from the, uh, from the faculty committees, when I hit return, I just hit the tab key. The other way I can do that is I can go up here and I can look at this little left arrow or this little right arrow. And if I do the right arrow, um, then Uh, then uh, I uh, uh, then it just takes me over the same way as hitting tab, right? But sometimes I might say, you know what? I really don't want that to be a sub bullet. I want it to be a bullet. In that case, I go to the this little left arrow thing on paragraph and it'll take it out there with, uh, uh, with no problem. Okay, but in this case, I'm going to take this out. Right, all right, so faculty committees. Um, so, I go down to the end of that, I hit enter to get to the next line, and I need to go with the left arrow because I'm going to start a new idea. Um,
Okay, so I'm the program chair for industrial engineering. And I have been since, uh, uh, since I started here. Uh, for a long time, I was the only industrial engineer teaching industrial engineering. That made for an interesting life. Uh, and my, uh, uh, my other program members would be like mechanical engineers or chemical engineers. Uh, that made it kind of interesting. All right, so I'm the program chair. And under that, again, I could put um, things that I've done. Revise the curriculum. Uh, scheduled uh, all engineering programs. Right, there's all kinds of things I could do uh, yeah, uh, along that line. Uh, all right, so I hit return again, or enter, as it says on modern keyboards. Uh, sometimes I forget uh, the difference between what we experience now and what we experienced back in the day. Um, all right, now remember, y'all need to be putting in your stuff uh, on this, right? I'm just giving you examples for, from my resume. Uh, uh, all right, so, uh, so let's assume I'm going to go back to the, my previous employment. All right, so I hit backspace until I get back out to the full left, right? And then I'm going to put Tejas Lean. Uh, at the moment, it's also in Crown Point, New Mexico, because it's my own private company. Uh, all right, so that would be June 2011 to present. All right, once again, I do the thing of pushing the tab button until present disappears, then single spacing until I get that out to the right side, right? Now, the way I'm setting up my resume, y'all could do all kinds of different things uh, if you wanted to, uh, for example, you could put all your headers in the center, right? I just happen to like them left justified. But one thing that you need to think about is to be careful that you're not making it unreadable. Uh, the most important thing about your resume is they have to be able to read it and see why you are an attractive candidate um, uh, for the job that they have open. All right. So let me scroll this up here. All right, so I hit, uh, hit enter, and uh, then I'm going to put um, proprietor and facilitator. Right, and I could put, uh, I don't know, I could put, I might say proprietor, uh, that sounds too 
19th century, I'll put chief engineer. You know, because I know how y'all hate being reminded of the 19th century. Okay, maybe you don't actually care. Um, all right, so chief engineer and facilitator. Right, once again, I'm going to use bullet points. Um, uh, so, created training materials for lean production, uh, worked with local businesses and business people um, right and I could then put a sub bullet uh, training and consulting Um, right, so, um, and then I look and I say, boy, I don't know if I should put created and worked in the past tense. Uh, maybe I should just go ahead and say create, since I'm still creating training material for Tejas Lean, and Worky with local businesses. Oh, wait, no, Worky is not a word. Work with local businesses uh, and business people. Uh, uh, okay, so, um, um, now, um, uh, do me a favor and tell me what um, what work experience y'all have put down. Well, I currently work at a hospital and I added also an internship I did this summer. Also the detentional system, is that a prison thing? <laughs> no, internship. Oh, okay, <laughs> right. You have an internship with electrical engineering, right? And that's the thing, is being in school, y'all may not have real deep resumes. Obviously, I'm old and I had to do something all that time. Uh, so I could go way, way back until uh, my paper route at the Ottumwa Courier uh, back in the 60s. Um, uh, but even on my CV, if I ever dig out all my theater stuff and put all that in, I'm probably not going to go all the way back to the Ottumwa Courier. Um, uh, all right, so uh, Victoria has shared with us uh, uh, what she has, uh, has done. Um, and how about uh, uh, the rest of y'all? Um, I don't really have any experience in the engineering field yet. <laughs> so. Okay, well it doesn't necessarily have to be as an engineer. Okay. One thing you want to show is you want to show who have you worked for that can vouch for you like, oh yeah, this person shows up for work every day. Kind of an important thing. Uh, uh, this person uh, uh, tries to do a good job. Um, uh, uh, you know, this, this person was a really good employee, understood things, uh, when, you know, you, you want to be thinking in terms of that. Now, you may be in school and have never had a job at all, right? In that case, you want to put down your experience in school and experience you have volunteering. 
right? For example, do you have you volunteered with anyone? Okay, you're you're not making this easy for me. <laughs> um, all right, but you are in school now. How long have you been in school? Since about four years now. But I was in the medical field before. Okay, and there I did you do go. A couple of internships with chiropractic offices and, and things like that. And what is your major uh, uh, now? Uh, industrial engineering. And I honor you for it. <laughs> um, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, it. You guys need to understand. I have trouble recognizing people's faces. Uh, I think I have a touch of what psychologists call uh, face blindness. Uh, and once we had the mask on, I'm lost. It's a good excuse. So, I use that often. <laughs> well, when I was at uh, Bash's the other day, I recognized one friend because they said, oh, hi, Harry, and I recognized her voice. She was with another friend that I did not recognize until she talked at the very end when we were all leaving and, and she said, have fun, Harry, or something. And, and I'm like, oh, Shamberall, oh, oh, okay. It, there's a bit of a humiliating thing. I try, hard, I try hard to remember people's names, associate them with the correct people, but the whole mask thing is throwing me off. All right, so you worked in the medical field You've been going to school for a while, so you've got a lot of, uh, of stuff there that you can mine uh, for your resume. So, um, uh, so Mr. Nez, what about you? Um, I just uh, put store um, uh, down in New Mexico. I didn't put anything specific, just general. And, uh, uh, okay, when you okay. say store Gallup, New Mexico, I mean, did you work for some specific store? Um, Walmart, then I put cash here, then for the sub bullets, I put a uh, bag groceries, then uh, next bullet, put push carts back into store, then the sub bullets, uh, lead cart pusher, then a uh, cart pusher trainer, that's what I have. So. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, uh, so that that's good. You're kind of outlining what what you did there, and we always want to outline it in kind of this bullet point form because it's very fast to read bullet points. It's very, uh, it becomes a lot slower if you put all of that into a little paragraph. Uh, I, uh, I once had a super long argument with one of my uh, uh, subordinates when I worked for Texas A&M uh, because he insisted that everything you put in any document had to be exactly gr uh, grammatically correct. And I, I argued, no, we want effective communication. There are times you've got to be exactly grammatically correct, right? If I write a report uh, uh, for a customer or for a class, I want to be as grammatically correct as I can be uh, although still, sometimes I end up writing in some smart-ass comment down the line, but uh, I have no excuse for myself in this regard. Um, and uh, you, sir, sure, uh, you, sir, here in the front, I'm, I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name for the moment. Um, Brendan. Uh, Brendan. Okay, so what have you got uh, on your resume here? Um, 
Peninsula Club Marina. I was a houseboat cleaner and for Walmart as well, country soccer. Fantastic. Uh, uh, okay, so, uh, uh, so you've got a certain set of things you could say uh, about that. You know, and I have had people hand me resumes where it's like, I worked at Walmart, and I did stuff. And uh, <laughs> I did uh, clerical work for um, Shanto Preparatory School for the Human Resources Office. Excellent. Okay, see, so you've got quite a few things that you could put down and you can kind of detail what were the duties involved with those. Uh, Uh, all right, so, right, and I could go down the line here. Uh, right, and before that, I was working at Ohio University while I was a student there. Um, and so that would have been August. 2007 to June 2011. Um, again, I'm going to tab out. Right, and uh, there I was um, a graduate student. Well, actually, graduate student. I was actually more, I was employed as a graduate assistant slash teaching assist, assistant. Let me tell you, you have never plumbed the depths of excitement until you've been a teaching assess, uh, assistant and had to grade 71 essays on the Three Mile Island disaster. When I did that, I was praying for nuclear disaster by the end. All right, so I would put down duties the same way um, uh, that I did uh, uh, for my other jobs. Uh, before that, I was working for Texas A&M University, university system, uh, right? My last job was as um, uh, chief engineer, um, right? Now here, because I kept, uh, because I moved jobs quite a few times. Let me think. I was chief engineer uh, until August 2007. When did I start that though? Um, I want to say I started that in June 2006. Um, before that, I was site manager, um, and that was like May of 2004 to June uh, 2006. Right, obviously I would be putting the different duties for each of those uh, under here, but for the sake of brevity, because uh, obviously, um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, backspace. And before that, I was a 
research engineering associate four and that would have been like um, April 2003 to May 2004. Not Mao, though, May. Uh, let me think. I was a research engineering associate or a research research engineering as as some would have it three uh, let me think I think that was May 2002 to uh, April 2003. And finally, I was a research engineer. Ah, help, we're being attacked. <laughs> Associate two from June 2001 to May 2002. All right, obviously this is um, um, uh, this is the kind of uh, thing that happens. You work at a job, you get promoted. You know, you start out as one of the workers, you get promoted to supervisor, right? Then you're working as that, at that job, the chance comes along and they promote you to manager, things like that. Uh, okay, so, uh, Now, I also worked for Texas A&M while I was going to graduate school to get my master's degree. But you know what? I'm going to skip that at this time. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, say, OK, so what else uh, do we put in? Uh, well, uh, and a real obvious one is education, right? And that gets us back into a header. So I put my bold and underline, go down. All right, so you on your resume, you always want to go from the latest thing you've done to the earliest. Um, and so, um, mechanical and systems design, uh, Ohio University PhD, but I haven't finished my PhD, 
So I put down ABD, which means all but dissertation. Uh, next, I put down uh, MSIE, or Masters of Science in Industrial Engineering. I guess I could go ahead and write it out if it's going to look more impressive. Texas A and M University, but I've got to be sure and put Kingsville because I would be uh, uh, I would be flying a false flag if I just put Texas A and M University, right and. Was it, uh, I graduated in August of 2002. All right, and before that, bachelor's of science, mechanical engineering. Texas A and I University. August nineteen eighty three. All right, so what did I leave out? I left out an of here. All right, so sue me. All right, so what else uh, might we want to put down? Um, Activities and awards, possibly? Or accomplishments? Uh, we could put down accomplishments. Or a GPA. Uh, what, I'm sorry, what did you say? Or maybe the GPA for each. <coughs> GPA. Uh, I actually only want to put that down for my top two degrees. My bottom degree, my GPA is now only 2.5 because they're too lazy to add up all the numbers uh, because the, uh, my transcript is still on paper for my bachelor's degree. Right? 1983, like I told you guys, our whole school had one computer. <laughs> uh, so whenever they uh, redo my uh, transcript for my bachelor's, they just say 2.5 or maybe they put a little bit more on, you know. It's, uh, all right, whatever, guys. Uh, we're there. Now, that didn't mean that I necessarily... Uh, got straight C's across the board uh, or anything like that. I actually did very well in my junior and senior year uh, in engineering. You know, I was getting mostly A's and B's. Uh, but having gotten thrown out of college twice really did a number on my GPA. All right, so yeah, I might put uh, my GPA for each of these. I might not, kind of depending. Uh, Victoria, what did you say about um, activities? Activities, awards. Um. Ah, activities and awards. Okay, that's a good one. All right, so activities and awards. Uh, 
that is a good one to put in. Uh, you'll notice I spelled activities in a really weird way. So I right click on it and it gives me some choices there. Uh, activities and awards is a good section. Uh, particularly for y'all that may not have really deep resumes. Um, you know, it'll give them an idea of the kind of person you are. Um, licenses and qualifications uh, is a section I always put down um, because I have some actual licenses. Uh, right? Uh, Patents and publications. Uh, is another section. Uh, 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 that I like to. Uh, uh, include. Uh, usually I include that in my. Uh, 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 CV more than in my short resume. Um, uh, sometimes I'll put in uh, a hobbies section. Uh, that kind of overlaps a little with activities and awards maybe. Um, Uh, okay, so you know you've got uh, you've got a, a a choice of different things you can put in, right? The ideal is to have your short resume be two pages long. Um, for uh, uh, for some of these. On my short resume, if I still got that up, oh, of course not. All right, so here's a little thing. I want to open something that uh, I just had open a little while ago, right? So I go here to File. I go to the Open. It gives me a choice of all the things that we've looked at recently. Um, uh, or I can browse and find the file I want. Uh, but I'm going to open my short resume from 2017. I discovered I've been updating my CV, but I haven't been updating my uh, uh, short uh, resumes. Um, And you'll notice in the skills section, I didn't even have a header for that uh, in this one. Um, uh, my uh, professional experience, I've got a lot more uh, in there. Um, Oh, I forgot being an adjunct professor for A&M Kingsville. I did that uh, uh, for one semester. Uh, being a PhD student, graduate uh, uh, the Space Scholar Program, I forgot to throw that in. Um, right, you'll notice that here I've gone a different way in that it says Space Scholar Program, the time and then Air Force Research Lab, Kirkland Air Force Base, Albuquerque, et cetera. Um, uh, my Texas A&M experience, my education, uh, right? And then at the very bottom, because I have my curriculum vitae, I, uh, I say I have more detail in that and you can have that on request. Although a lot of jobs, I just send them the short resume 
the curriculum vitae, and I call it a day. Um, man, this doesn't have the hobbies or the licenses or anything. Texas A&M just takes up too much room. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, there we go. Uh, so let me, uh, uh, we have a few minutes in class. Let me throw the floor open to any questions that you may have. Yes, sir. Uh, for the last one, uh, the, the VTI is what you're talking about. Uh, what would that uh, particularly include, uh, basically? Well, um, for example, in my Texas A&M section in the short resume, right, even though it takes up a lot of space, it doesn't take up nearly as much space as it does in the curriculum vitae. Because in the curriculum vitae, I went through every project I ever did, what we did in it, what, um, you know, uh, did we save money on that project, uh, you know, what was the percentage of uh, uh, improvement in uh, efficiency from that project. Um, so it really, really goes into a lot of depth. Let me look here quickly and see if I have an example of my long resume here. I don't, uh, I don't see a copy of that. I will go ahead and uh, bring, uh, uh, make sure that I have one of those loaded on here next time. So I can kind of show you the difference. Because there, oh my God, I've got my hobbies, I've got my uh, patents and publications, I've got this, I've got that, I've got the other thing. All right, now, what I want you to do is to print out your resume at whatever point you've got it to. Um, and for those of you watching at home, uh, send it to me by email uh, so that I can open it in Word and um, uh, and then uh, uh, because and, and save your resume. We are going to come back to this and uh, work on this some more. So should we leave our phone number and address blank for now then? Well, I'm not going to show everybody's uh, resume to everybody else, but yeah, if you would feel more comfortable that way. I do accumulate my students and former students' telephone numbers as I get them, but my pledge to you is those will never be used to harass you. They'll only be used if I have a specific deal that I need to talk to you very soon or I need to text you or something like that. I was just thinking that if other students can get into it. Get into what? Don't save it on your computer, save it on your flash drive. Because as soon as you turn off the program, the computer is going to wipe uh, your work off. printer do we use? There should be one that says like HP printer uh, room 325. Mine says it's offline. Okay, well, apparently I need to check that. Okay, for those of you enjoying this at home, have fun. I'm going to turn off the camera as I go by.
Well, it's got its lights on like it's uh, it's uh, a PageWide Pro 552DW. And some of these computers are not hooked up properly to the printer, and you actually have to take your flash drive and go to another computer. And, oh my God. 